All right, what's happening? Y'all, it's your boy Rico from Street Score Jew, and we're starting to dive into that 2025 class because Georgia has some really interesting targets. We already have some commits there as well, and I want to start diving into some of those guys because right now we have access to their sophomore tape. So by this time next year, or maybe even sooner than this, like when I started doing film sessions for the 2024 class, like maybe a couple of months ago, we can start to dive into their junior tape after they've had their junior seasons, which they're entering in right now. So we're starting with defensive lineman Elijah Griffin from Savannah, Georgia. I mean, they're closer to Jacksonville than they are Athens. So it's not like just because he's in the state of Georgia, it's an automatic to Athens. First of all, we've seen a lot of great Georgia players. Um, go elsewhere anyway. We already got KJ Bolden going to Florida State, Sammy Brown going to Clemson. We have Edric Houston going to Ohio State. So it's not an automatic at all. But so far from what we've heard, Elijah Griffin does like Georgia at least a little bit. So maybe there's some optimism there. But of course, this is a 2025 recruit, like I already said. So this is going to be a long recruiting process. He may not commit to any school for maybe even more than a year right now. Quite likely that he commits within a year, less than a year, but quite likely that he could commit a year or a little over that from now. And by now, y'all should already know what all of these film sessions, go ahead and skip ahead to where you see film session being broken down the huddle tape on the screen if that's all you want. Because this is Rico of Street Scores. You we're doing a full breakdown of Georgia's current recruiting class in 2025, since we're talking about a 2025 commit. If you want to go ahead and get to the film session, again, I'm giving you the disclaimer now. Just go ahead and start fast forwarding through and find the part where I'm actually breaking down the huddle. Because before then, we're gonna do a deep dive into this guy. We're gonna take a look at his rankings on on three, two, four, seven, ESPN rivals, all of that type of stuff. And before we dive into all of that, make sure you stiff arm that like button, stiff arm the bell next to the subscription button and the subscription button of course because man i'm telling you i'm coming with so much content especially once we start getting into this season for the georgia bulldogs i'm gonna keep doing the film sessions that i've been doing that's been the majority of my content on this channel so far but i'm also gonna start diving into like what's going on with the 2023 georgia team like what are we doing in hopes of getting this three peat so maybe i'll get my hands on some film for that to do some film sessions for current players in georgia all kinds of stuff man so make sure y'all stay tuned with all the content content definitely stiff arm that like button on the way out if you enjoy or like this video in any way and if you want more content like this of course let me know in the comment section who you may want some film sessions on i'm still of course not done with the 2024 class i want to do demello jones probably next i'm looking at ryan pluglisi I'm, I'm waiting on dylan riola till we get some of his senior tape this year because we don't have any junior tape we just got to go off the sophomore tape maybe i'll just go ahead and break that down but either way man without further ado let's get it All right, so Elijah Griffin, undisputed five-star everywhere you look already. I mean, you have Ellis Robinson, who I feel like is arguably the best defensive player out of this entire 2024 recruiting class, and he just now got the five-star from ESPN, I believe it was, that was holding out, that now made him a five-star plus prospect, which means you're a five-star in every recruiting board and organization. Elijah Griffin's already that as a 2025 recruit, and it is August 22nd, 2023. And he's probably been a five-star plus guy for months now. I'm just now recording this film session. That's how much of a crazy talented guy this is. This guy is probably going to be even more highly touted than Williams Winery. Maybe. Williams Winery ended up being the number one player according to On3. But this guy is the number two player according to on three two four seven number one player according to rivals at worst the number five player overall according to espn and again we're already a year and a half ahead of him signing paper to decide where he's gonna go to school so he's definitely highly touted sooner than williams winery was so just assuming based off of the trajectory maybe he'll continue to be the highly touted we'll see either way though georgia potentially missing out on williams winery to make it up by getting elijah griffin would be big time man i'm telling you this guy is different six foot four 270 pounds already not even in i mean he's going into his junior year now just starting it um and again he's coming from savannah which 
you know it's technically in georgia but they're only like two hours away from jacksonville which is way closer than atlanta or athens so it's not an automatic that he would choose us over them and then anyway it goes right now so it's they're saying that south carolina has the best chance to get them but i think georgia has a great chance i think georgia sits well from everything that i'm hearing so far but maybe on three has some sources that i just missed out on that i haven't heard about i don't know oh let me go ahead and scoot this over so y'all can see his full name i'm over here tripping man over here tripping i'm so sorry and then we get the picture down there yes sir yes sir so yeah man according to on three industry ratings like if you average out what everybody else got for him he basically comes up to the number two player overall out of the entire country number one defensive lineman number one player in georgia the only player above him right now is bryce underwood and that's understandable because he's a really good player um he's a five star plus guy as well and most importantly he's a quarterback so that's where a lot of that comes from typically if there's a generational defensive lineman and potentially a generational quarterback they're going to give the generational quarterback the nod just because of positional value and if bryce underwood ends up staying in michigan to go to michigan um that would be really nice i prefer that than him going to ohio state or alabama or some other rival that georgia has to deal with uh, michigan is a really good team um, they're arguably one of the best teams in college football right now, but I, whew, I definitely prefer him on Michigan than I would take him being on Alabama or somewhere else in the SEC for sure. Any of these new schools is pulling up to the SEC like Texas or anything like that. But so far, usually with my film sessions, I've watched a couple of clips on guys to kind of have like a general synopsis of how they may look before we dive into the film session. But like always, every film session, I haven't watched their entire huddles like at all. I want to give y'all the genuine reactions to like my first initial reactions of seeing the plays just like it's more than likely your first time seeing the plays so you get a genuine ooh and ah, all of that type of stuff but this guy i haven't seen anything i've seen a couple of pictures of him i've seen some descriptions of him people hyping him up talking about he's like the next great player and things like that i've seen his on three ratings like what we're looking at right now 247 all of that type of stuff i haven't seen one single highlight or clip of this guy so all of this is going to be completely new man i'm super excited and for him to be a defensive lineman at 270 maybe it's safe to assume that he'll play a lot of five tech at the next level in college but of course in high school you're 270 pounds you can play anywhere you can play nose tackle if you want to um that's a big guy but maybe i know the way georgia wants their edge rushes to be built he'll probably play edge but he'll of course he'll play a lot of three a lot of five everything that he wants to play i mean he's so talented how can you tell him no for whatever he wants to do if he wants to go out there and be the middle linebacker one play from everything i'm hearing you let him do that but let's go ahead and dive into the tape man let's go ahead and get to it so where is he at right now okay so he's starting off on the edge like i expected let's see what we got going on right now good hands already we're already seeing hands good tackle too as well and again i'm trying to work on you know not pausing and stopping at, at very least just let it run through the entire play and then we'll start to take it back pause rewind and break stuff down but i try to at least each time we see a new play let it run through um i'm working on that but you know i'm just such a film session guy i'm ready to pause immediately without letting it run through but man look at the hands already i mean you see strength let me see some ball get off let me try to i mean not the like the most explosive guy off the ball but golly man the strength in the hands to get rid of that guy like that oh my god he made that guy look like a tight end that was a left tackle out there that he bullied like that lord have mercy now he's at the top oh my no that's an athlete right there bro people that big 270 pounds shouldn't be able to move like that man that there was no sloppiness in that at all typically somebody 270 pounds typically just defensive lineman period especially a bigger defensive lineman it's not like a bomb miller tj watt size guy we're talking about a pure five tech like the chase youngs and williams winaries and now elijah griffins man that just looks i mean that really didn't have it we don't really have anything to analyze from there except for i mean i love the heads up play to make sure the running back doesn't have it and then to have athleticism have the athleticism to go get the quarterback um when he realizes the running back doesn't have it um but even just beyond that i mean just look at him like it looks like he's doing a combine drill and then just takes off and gets the guy and it just looks so athletic Oh, that's what I get for not letting the play run through, even though I don't think that was a fumble, though. Um, then we got him at the top of the defensive line on this play. See what's happening. Right tackle, scared for his life already, ready to kick step. Look at him leaning back. Oh, my God. He just got through immediately. I don't even know who was supposed to block him on that play. Who was responsible for... <laughs> nah, one more time at least, man. Who was responsible for blocking this guy, man? 
Oh, the guard. They tried to ask a guard to come through and slide over like an entire gap to get in front of this guy. And there's no way. There's no way you thought that the guard would be able to do something like that. Now we have him on the edge once again. Was that unblocked or was that just complete domination? That was the tackle fail. I don't know what Elijah Griffin is doing out here to people, man. But he clearly has a little mini tornado around him because people just aren't even able to get hands on him sometimes. I don't know what's going on. And that's a really interesting tag right there to identify where he is. Can't stop, won't stop like P. Diddy. Oh, my God. The run support is ridiculous. The penetration, the strength. You see the ridiculous strength. That running back looks like he ran into a brick wall once he came into contact with Elijah Griffin. There was no contention for any type of moving forward at all. And he literally ran into a Mack truck. He literally got hit by a truck. Look at that. Like he almost magnetized to him with the momentum that he had and then how he just immediately stopped. Oh my God, with one arm brings the guy down with one arm completely. He tackled the offense alignment and the running back in the same play, dog. Come on now. What are we talking about here, man? What are we doing? What are we doing? He tackled the running back and the offense alignment in the same play. One arm each. That's how athletic this guy is. Again, edge rush. So I'm glad that I, my guess was right at 270. He's going to play a lot of edge. But even at high school, I'm surprised. Oh, my God. Just a complete bully, com complete athletic freak, man. What is this? Yo, nah. What is this, dog? What is any? I don't even know what to break down. You're seeing hand technique. You're seeing hand placement. Um, You love it. When a when a defensive lineman first engages with an offensive lineman, and you hope the same thing, vice versa, your offensive lineman versus defensive lineman, there's pop. As soon as the hands touch them, pop. R like a whole whiplash movement right there. There's pop right there. And then after that, the strength to continue to drive them is even more impressive. But he has explosive hands, man. And that's big time because you're going to win a lot of fights. You're going to win a lot of snaps just off of that alone like this one. And then the extra strength and drive. I mean, I love it. I love the way he stays low and he's keeping his head up this whole time, too. If you're looking with that pop, he has his head up looking for where the ball is. He's almost like if if the running back were to cut it back this way, whoever has the ball were to cut it back inside. It looks like Elijah Griffin has his head up to be aware enough to make that play if, if he needs to as well. But, I mean, the penetration there was so ridiculous. It looked like he was almost unblocked. You could almost just edit that guy out and you wouldn't really question anything. Oh, my God. The strength is ridiculous, man. He's the strongest player on the field easily, man. These guys are... I think he was lower than him to start this play right here. I mean, nah, it's actually just good, great technique from... I mean, kind of both guys. Elijah Griffin is kind of lower, though. And then just the... <laughs> he's tackling people with the offensive alignment, man. He's out here getting double tackles. I got to make up a new word. And then the technique. And then the hand usage, the technique. He's coming with a floor. Not only is he just this athletic freak. There's a floor here, man. The, we are, we've already seen the bull rush is crazy. We've already seen his moves to get to the outside is crazy. Now you're seeing him put hands on people, club them away. And then the footwork too, man. Somebody 270, six foot four to have the footwork to do that little bounce right there. That little stutter step. Almost like he looks as agile as a running back on this. And then the hand placement. No, that's unfair, man. Because most most defensive linemen that aren't this athletic, I mean, even with the hand technique, you would be trying to push this guy away, but you'd be more so moving vertically rather than laterally like he is right here. He's pushing this guy away with hand technique and then laterally moving over. It looks like he's doing like a cone drill. Nah, people this athletic... People this big shouldn't be able to move like that, man. That's just unfair. I can see why he's an undisputed, at least top two player, according to most recruiting boards, man. This is, you can argue a generational talent, dog. And we got to remember, let, let, I mean, I'm going to let this keep playing. This is sophomore tape, guys. He's only getting bigger. He's only getting stronger. He's only getting faster. This is sophomore tape. I can't wait to look at his junior tape from this year coming up. And then after that, we'll have senior tape to look at. This is this is a grown man in high school, y'all. You see the speed even on this play right here. Six foot four, two seventy. Shouldn't be able to move like this, man. First of all, how quickly he was able to just get rid of the offensive lineman with a nice little ah, get off me real quick, and then to track down the quarterback so quickly. I mean, I know I keep saying he's two seventy, but it's just the fact that he doesn't look like it, and that's why I keep emphasizing it. The ball get off was insane there. The tackle didn't even know what happened. Ball get off was crazy. Tackle, ooh, turnstile. He turned the tackle into a turnstile, man. Oh, my God. Thank you for coming to Six Flags. Oh, no. Look at the poor tackle, man. What happened? And look, the ball get off was crazy. Did he know the snap? Did the quarterback...
Was Elijah Griffin part of the huddle along with the rest of the offensive line? Looks like he was part of the huddle and the tackle wasn't. Look at the ball get off. What is that? Why is he already passed everybody? And then great wrap up tackle, man. This is insane sophomore tape, y'all. This is absolutely crazy. Um, you're not going to really see the stuff like this from sophomores. You're not going to see stuff like this, period. Just people coming out of high school. I mean, I feel like he's ready to go to the draft. And this is the stuff that Kirby Smart loves. I love when we see this. And um, usually in most film sessions that we do for guys that Georgia's at the very least interested in, whether they go to Georgia or not, the hustle to make this play no matter what. He's the defensive end on the weak side of the formation. They run it to the strong side, and this guy's pursuing it the whole way down. You already, you have to know from everybody talking to you, telling you, scouts, maybe even your family, your friends, you have to notice just from how much you've been dominant on the field against everybody. Everything's coming easy. You are one of the best players in high school, if not arguably the best player in high school coming out of your class. And for you to still have that want to, that motor, the I want to make a play every play, even though he didn't have to do that. That guy was going to get tackled no matter what. But the pursuit from behind to always want to be involved. Kirby Smart not only recruits elite athletes, elite physical players, but also players that are mentally elite as well. And they want to do whatever it takes to win. Elijah Griffin checks that box as well. Right now he's on the edge, but it looks like there's like an extra tight end to help. Um, uh, the tight end didn't help and nothing. I mean, golly, man, what just happened? He just tackled two people at the same time. <laughs> he, no, he pushed. Was that the guard or the tackle he pushed on the ground so easily? Tackle thrown away. Full back engulfed, running back engulfed right behind him. What is going on here? Now, this is one of the most dominant defensive line plays I've ever seen of watching film ever doesn't matter if you're a sophomore if you're a high school player yo this is some of the most dominant this should have been the first play in the highlights typically you have your best plays first and then the plays just get gradually and gradually a little less impressive but still great over um over the course of the film this is the best play i think i've watched on film from anybody between williams with nary edrick houston even joseph jonah Ajayi. this is the most dominant play i think i've seen yet dog he just ate alive three people, including the guy who had the ball. Throws the tackle away. I mean, completely ragdolls him, makes him look like he's 80 pounds. Then he engulfs the fullback and the running back in the same play. What was any of that, dog? What was that? All right, and don't even pay attention to the change of shirts and the new headphones on my head, nothing like that. Don't even pay attention to that. We're going to keep it pushing. Um, oh, man, again, the great IQ right here. Heads up. He's keeping his eye on the backfield. He's not one of those guys that gets tunnel vision. Go get ball. Go get quarterback. And that's all they focus on. This guy has his head up. And he's looking for exactly where the ball is. He's playing the edge. It's his job to set the edge and make sure nobody gets to the outside of him. And then he's there to go and, and, and make a play on that. I don't know why the tight end went past him and went for the next guy. Because I feel like you should do every. I feel like the whole offense should be focused on what do we do to stop Elijah Griffin. Let's run the ball away from him let's make sure we we at least pick him up with somebody and don't leave him unblocked let's double team him even at times if you're gonna run his way i don't know why high school offensive coordinators just like don't think of the obvious stuff like that but either way man this man is different oh my god look at the strength look at the technique to get rid of the guy again this is a sophomore y'all Oh my god, great job of getting your hands on him and not allowing him to get his hands on you you control the fight it's, I'm going to pause it right at the moment where you, right here, he's in control. He's already winning. The offensive tackle has his head down on him. He can't even see what's going on. He's completely lost in the play. At this point, Elijah Griffin completely has control of this situation. And then the ability to throw him off of you, get rid of him, and then go track this play down from behind as the defensive lineman, where that's really a linebacker or a DB's job right there where the quarterback ran. That's amazing stuff right there. Man. I'm telling you, this guy's different, dog. I'm telling you, let's see him on the edge. Again, he's two gapping. He can two-gap. You know Georgia, Alabama love their defensive line in the two-gap. You need to be able to just not just simply just run up the field as an edge rusher. We need you to control that edge. And if the, the ball carrier goes to the outside, you need to get rid of the tackle and go to the outside. If he goes to the inside, you need to be ready to make a move to the inside. And this guy, first of all, 
even ignoring the two while two gapping he's bull rushing the mess out of this guy pushing him back completely just ragdolling this guy and then another play where he tackles two people at the same time the ball carrier and an offensive lineman that's like the third or fourth time this tape already that's absolutely ridiculous look at the push he gets to look out of everybody on the defensive line how he's the one with the most depth he already has the most penetration just off of pure strength look at the guy resetting his anchor over and over again to attempt that the very least slow him down just a little bit doesn't work and then elijah griffin is there to block the punt it doesn't matter what you need him to do he's gonna do it well even if it's requiring the block 270 pounds blocking a punt is crazy especially not going block like he didn't even go unblocked on that play and he still find a way to do it now we're fit now we're doing a field goal he's gonna get this too oh my god that's freak athleticism that's a great vertical that's great length you can't teach somebody to block field goals like that i mean you can you can you can increase you can develop what they already have to make them better at it but this right here is just pure talent that's pure raw talent that if he goes to georgia kirby smart's gonna turn him into a number one overall pick at the very least a top five pick he has that written all over him right now man edge rusher defensive talent. i love how he's in control of every fight granted these huddle tapes are always highlight tapes. We're not seeing his bad snaps, which I'm pretty sure even as great of a player he is, he has his occasional bad snaps. I would love to see those so we can break those down as well. Because I want to do true all 22 film sessions where we're looking at good and bad. Literally just look at one game and look at every single snap and judge whether it was a good snap or a bad snap and explain why. But this is ridiculous, man. He's always in control. He gets hands on these guys. They they aren't allowed to really get any serious hands on him. The pop again, the whiplash off of initial contact. And then the club swim, get off of me, swim over it. And then now he's in the quarterback's face. I love the fact that he already has some nuance too. A lot of high school players aren't good at like time in the jump. Like, oh, let me go ahead and get my hands up so he can't throw it. And then even after that, typically after you jump i mean you're out of the play the quarterback's running past you this guy is so athletic that even after jumping he's still there to track him down for at the very least what counts as a qb pressure probably even a qb hit depending on what standards you use here he is at edge rusher again this is uh, you could definitely argue this is a generational talent they don't make elijah griffins every year dog they really don't Again, heads up play. It's not just freakish athleticism, it's IQ as well. He could have just been the, a typical edge rusher. Go get quarterback. Don't worry about nothing. Have his head down, do everything he can to get past the tackle. That's like his primary objective, but it's not his only objective. Your prime, your real objective is to make sure the ball doesn't get past you, no matter who has it. And this guy has his head up while in control of the fight. Whenever he's ready to move on, he can, and he's the one that's out there making the tackle for loss on the running back. If he was just a typical edge rusher that just is just go get quarterback, he's just running. Even with the freakish athleticism, he's just running past this. He's out of the play, and now the running back is running past him. But he not only freakishly athletic and talented but also very high iq that's why he's involved in every play and then leaving this guy unblocked is when you see the athleticism look at the explosion right here like shot out of a cannon at 270 pounds is insane and these wrap-up tackles again it looks like he's engulfing people it doesn't look like he's necessarily just hitting them he looks like he's just swallowing them whole like a titan like it's really it's really bad dog look at the edge setting oh my god i would have loved it like if he would have turned his body a little bit more to really really set the edge like to like just at a slightly different angle to where like he's almost not pe like completely perpendicular to the defensive line or offensive line or whatever but like just a little bit more than that but it doesn't matter he pushes the guy so far back and i'm assuming this is like a tight end or a i don't know who this is but they should have never thrown elijah griffin on him but then anyway so far from what we've seen on the tape even if it's a tackle he's moving people this far back anyway so it doesn't matter even if he doesn't set the edge like angle wise he's just so athletic and so strong long arms the edge is set anyway even though he's not there physically he's able to get there physically when it's when it matters most he's not there waiting for the running back but he's able to get there when it's time and then this play right here another block field goal this is these are three special teams blocks one two punts and a field goal my fault I said field goal just now two punts and a field goal blocked in one sophomore tape can I please emphasize sophomore one more time for y'all again heads up to find the ball carrier and a good tackle engulf the guy not the best textbook tackle that was a really odd tackle look like they were like you know doing a karate MMA move but I'll take it man the guy got to the ground again edge setting 
they ask him to do a lot as a sophomore, man. I mean, to be the most freakishly athletic guy, typically they just want you to go after the quarterback and not worry about anything else. But again, they're asking him to keep his head up, set the edge, find the ball carrier, and if it comes to your gap, you go make the play. Again, it would be nice, but then again, he may not. He may be a guy that doesn't need to do this. But again, a lot of edge rushers would have to curve their body just a little bit to set the edge. Instead of being literally parallel with the rest of the defensive linemen and offensive line and stuff like that, if you can just angle your body a little bit more to where you're kind of diagonal and then you're really setting the edge physically that would be even better but again this is sophomore tape out of high school not even college and then on top of that he doesn't even need to because he's just so strong so athletic and has good technique that it doesn't matter he literally doesn't and then it was three people on the tackle on that play i don't even know what happened right there that was just great defense bad offense in general even ignoring elijah griffin here he is lined up and for some reason, they're leaving him unblocked and running it to his side. This is just terrible play design and play calling from these high school offensive coordinators, man. Y'all see me complain about them all the time in film sessions. And I'm not acting like I could just go in and be a high school coach right now today and do better than these guys. But you got to question some of the play calling to where you leave a generational player basically unblocked and then run the running back right towards them. What did you expect to happen right there? Were you just throwing that play out there? And then to bring a tight end or a fullback to come over and try to block this guy oh no that's a pulling guard oh my god he's just such a big human that doesn't even look like a pulling guard look at him engulfing him it looks like jojo's what is it the, the second part of the first season when buddy just when uh the the old ancient guy was just consuming people that's what that looks like it looks like the tackle is gone but then also most importantly he makes this tackle look like a tight end i thought this was a tight end until i noticed that that's a, I think that's a tackle, but Elijah Griffin is just the biggest human being. It looks like if you just take any of these guys on Google Images or on PowerPoint and you click like the top right and then expand them a little bit, that's what it looks like if you just edited that and then placed them back onto the film. That's what he looks like. He's towering over everybody. He's taller. He's wider. He's just straight up bigger. This is ridiculous, man. I don't even know how you expect these guys. And then to not give up on the play. Once he didn't have that tackle, again, I would prefer, again, technique-wise, if he was a little bit more um, perpendicular, a little bit more diagonal as far as setting the edge, he wouldn't have this problem of this guy running by him like that probably. But um, still, the fact that even after that, he didn't make the tackle, he's still running the play down to make sure that he does. Again, hustle motor on top of all of the ridiculous talent and technique that he already has. Again, sophomore tape, people. So, oh my God, just to push that guy back so leisurely, just so calm, like just to push a whole grown man back two yards like that, like it's nothing. And then to get off of the other guy and then to get in on the tackle, even though, I mean, when you look at when this play starts, Elijah Griffin should not be the one making the tackle right here. You have all of these guys over here, especially defensive lineman-wise. Why is this edge rusher the one making the tackle down here, man? That man just wants to be involved. His head is up. He's looking for the ball. He doesn't care. I mean, you can question gap integrity and, uh, and you know, being disciplined and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, this man knows where the ball is going. And he gets there and he's the one that makes the play, even though he should not have been responsible for that at all. That was not his responsibility at all on that play. And he was still the one that made the tackle for loss. That is just different type of stuff, man. Look at that drive he got on the tackle. The tackle is waiting on him. How do you get bulldozed that so he has a great bull rush? Of course, we knew that from strength, but now you're seeing a perfect example of how dominant his bull rush can be. And now he's in the back. Look at the die. Right, I wish we could have a perfect sideline view, but either way, you can see the furthest any other defensive lineman is, is what the, the 35 yard line? Elijah Griffin's all the way back at like the 32. Like that's the three yard difference of depth from a penetration just from a bull rush. It's not even like he got past the guy. He bull rushed him that far back. You have this defensive lineman still all the way up on like the 38 yard line. Oh my Lord, man. This is ridiculous, man. I mean, even if you're not looking at what he's doing to the other offensive line, just looking at what he's doing compared to the other defensive linemen on his team, and you see how special he is. And him against the run, man, we're not just seeing, as an edge rusher, typically a lot of these huddles are just filled with a bunch of pass rush moves. But all of the shiny plays. This guy's making tackles for losses against the run. And again, he did an excellent job setting the edge right here. This is what I'm talking about with not being parallel to the offensive line. He's completely perpendicular. This is his edge set. Great bull rush and everything he has hands on the guy so he's in control of the situation and right here he decides okay the running back's gonna try to run past me i'm gonna get rid of this guy and i'm gonna clog that lane too 
there's nowhere you can run if you would have taken it outside inside it didn't matter the problem was you took it to my side inside outside doesn't matter if you take it to my side i'm making it the running back should have just went that way and figured it out that way because going on you y'all should know pre-snap where elijah griffin is don't take the ball that way i'm still not understanding why we're still running it his direction if you know he's this good oh my god he almost had this offensive lineman off his toes i'm sorry for not letting the play go through but golly the offensive lineman was off the ground at one point i think both of his feet were in the air at one point and great reach tackle man that's athleticism and length coming into play right there 6 4 270 to make an open field play like that is amazing and then most importantly as an edge rusher the strength right here the <laughs> offensive tackle is completely out of control at this point elijah griffin is winning this rep already he's unbalanced he's in the air at one point trying to backpedal reset his anchor over and over again it never works and then when he's ready to get rid of him he does that moves away and there's some agility in that as well it's not just strength it's footwork i mean you see him moving side to side which way you going what you doing where you going remember kevin hart stand up what you doing where you going you going that way that way what you doing what you that way that way oh you want to go that way okay i'll move out of his way with agility he was showing strength this entire time, but that time that was footwork and technique to just literally get around the guy so so quickly and so smoothly like that. So fluid, man. It looked like some Von Miller stuff right there. Some TJ Watt stuff right there, man. That was a great play. Yeah, man, apparently that's the end of the film session, but man, this guy is different. So that's the end of this video. Please get in the comment section. Let me know how you feel about this prospect and why. And if you feel like this should be one of Georgia's top priorities in the next recruiting class, the 2025 class. I know we're not done with the 2024 class, so they still have some guys to focus on. But they're already recruiting this guy. They brought him in for camps, I believe, already and stuff like that. They love this guy. Um, they really, really want him. I'm, I'm, I haven't heard it from anywhere, but just looking at the tape, you can tell they're definitely going to prioritize this guy. Let me know if you feel in the comment section if they if they need to as well. If you agree with him being a top two player in this upcoming class, only behind Bryce Underwood. And if you feel like maybe he's even better than Bryce Underwood. Also, let me know in the comment section how you feel about my film analysis. I take all critiques, positive and negative. So let me know that as well. And of course, please stiff arm that like button, stiff arm the subscription button, and stiff arm the bell next to that subscription button. I'd really appreciate it. I'd really appreciate y'all man um, i'm working on trying to get this channel fully monetized and everything so if y'all can support the channel i really appreciate it subscribe and all of that and i'm gonna catch y'all later with some more film sessions i am out